Aloha, folks, and welcome to this edition of Five Questions. Of course, brought to you by News Radio 830KHVH, the Rick Amata program in the morning, and also appearing on HawaiiReporter.com on the homepage. Be sure to log in every day. Well, listen, today it's a special guest that we are delighted to have a chat with. Mike Hansen is president of the Hawaii Shippers Council. And Mike, thanks for being with us. How are you? Oh, very good. Thank you. Well, you know, it's a good way to start off every five questions with uh, the basics. Can you tell us about yourself and about the Hawaii Shippers Council? Uh, yeah, I was uh, born and raised here in Honolulu, graduated from Punho School and the University of Hawaii, mm-hmm. and uh, been involved in the maritime industry since the early 1970s, uh, including uh, lots of different uh, jobs, um, all the way through operating uh, my own shipping company. Mm-hmm. And uh, in later years, I've been doing what's known as ship broking, which is um, uh, involved in the, the sale and purchase and chartering of ships. And uh, the Hawaii Shippers Council was something that we formed uh, in the uh, late 1990s, uh, basically to support uh, the Jones Act Reform Coalition led by Rob Cortell at the time. And... Uh, it was an effort to uh, bring some reform to the uh, Jones Act uh, to allow for essentially foreign flagships to enter the domestic trades. That was the national proposal mm-hmm. that had been put forward by Rob Cortell. And since uh, the his group disbanded in, in the early 2000s, uh, we've been inactive. Uh, but in 2010, we decided that we would uh, uh, reform and uh, start uh, a new proposal, uh, which essentially is uh, to uh, ex- to exclude the uh, U.S. build requirement of the Jones Act from what are known as the non-contiguous domestic trade. Mm-hmm. That's uh, Alaska, Guam, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico. You know, I think it starts uh, at the very beginning with definition of terms, Mike, that our listeners and uh, readers would appreciate, and that, of course, is can you tell us what the Jones Act is? Uh, the Jones Act was uh, passed in 1920 as the Merchant uh, as the uh, Merchant Marine Act of 1920. Basically, it's got two, po- two parts. The first part is a, what's known as a cabotage uh, law, which restricts the carriage of goods and passengers uh, in, the, in the domestic coastwise trade to vessels that are U.S. flag, U.S. built, U.S. crewed, and U.S. owned. Mm-hmm. And, uh, that, and the second part of the Jones Act has to do with uh, seamen's personal injury. And, uh, for example, if you do a Google search for Jones Act, most of the entries that will come up will be uh, uh, plaintiff's attorneys looking for injured crew members who they can uh, sue on their behalf uh, mm-hmm. for injury. There's also, is there also an element called the Passenger Services Act? Because we had that uh, brought up with Daniel Lenoy regarding uh, Norwegian Caribbean. Right, yeah. There's, uh, there's uh, the passenger, vessel, the passenger Services Vessel Act of 1886. It actually predates uh, the Jones Act by Mm -hmm. quite a few years, and it essentially is a cabotage uh, law like the Jones Act. The Jones Act uh, basically covers cargo, and the the Passenger Services Vessel Act uh, covers uh, passengers. And the two have been conflated together, right. as have many other of the coastwise laws in, in under the basic rubric of the Jones Act. So if you can lay it out for us uh, uh, simply, Mike, uh, the application of the Jones Act here in Hawaii, um, what does it call for specifically in regard to goods and passengers being able to sail freely throughout the Hawaiian Islands? Uh, to carry passengers uh, in what's known as the coastwise trade, you have to have a ship or a barge or a tugboat or whatever the case may be uh, that is U.S. is re- is a registered vessel of the United States, i.e., U.S. flag, has been built in the United States and never been uh, substantially reconstructed in a foreign place, has had has uh, uh, a U.S. crew 
all the officers have to be citizens. Uh, Seventy-five percent of the ratings have to be citizens. The balance mm-hmm. can be uh, green card holders. Mm-hmm. And the ships have to be 75 percent owned by U.S. citizens. Okay. About how many vessels... Uh Boy, I'm way off the five question uh, format here. <laughs> it's just very interesting. Uh, talking with Mike Hansen, uh, President of Hawaii Shippers Council. About how many vessels are affected directly here in Hawaii, Mike? Uh, well, a lot, a very large number of vessels because uh, uh, the Jones Act and the Passenger Vessels Act uh, and the Coastwise Laws generally cover vessels all the way down to a yacht that might be uh, uh, putting itself out for charter. To, to, to carry a few passengers off of Lahaina. So every commercial vessel, essentially in the United States, is covered by the Jones Act. Um, interestingly, I can remember a case that Len Alcantara had many years ago uh, regarding um, the use of Zodiacs on the Napali coast. And even those vessels were uh had to be uh reconstructed in order uh to be used for commercial purposes because they were foreign built in France. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it goes all the way down to wow. to rowboats practically. There we have it talking with uh Mike Hansen. Uh it is five questions. We've used about seven of them already. <laughs> uh but uh what I'd like to do is is break it down from your point of view or maybe even those who may have a differing opinion. If you could tell us what are the benefits of the Jones Act, and then uh, con- conversely, what are what is some of the downside to the Jones Act? Well, yeah, uh, most uh, most uh, coastal countries uh, have some form of a cabotage law. Not all do, but uh, the, the majority of those in the world do. Uh, so it's not an unusual thing. The United States uh, has had cabotage laws that go all the way back to uh, to the first uh, uh, years of the republic. So these are not, uh, you know, unusual things. The difference with the current uh, regime in the United States is, as some people refer to it, as super cabotage. It's so restrictive. Uh, in terms of uh, what ship owners and are allowed to do, that it really adds an awful lot of cost to uh, shipping services, particularly affecting the, what's known as the non-contiguous jurisdictions. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll uh, just identify this as uh, question number four. And can you actually put some figures together for us, Mike, of what the impact to our economy is with the Jones Act in place as it is? Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's the Jones Act. I mean, to be able to identify what the impact would be uh, means that you have to have a, a counter model. Hmm. Say, for example, uh, would you um, allow foreign flagships to enter the Hawaii trade in all aspects, which would become pretty unruly? Uh, the uh, doing an analysis along those lines which we did back in the 1990s, uh, produced uh, a cost figure, something on the order of $2,000 per household, including all the downstream effects. Um, I haven't looked at that uh, calculation for a long time. Um, so it's, that's really the, uh, the best estimate I have at this time. Uh, we're talking with uh, Mike Hansen, who is president of the Hawaii Shippers Council, and uh, we're chatting about uh, the Jones Act specifically. And again, we'll invite Mike back uh, for a regular uh, conversation, maybe even an extended conversation, Mike, if you wouldn't mind, so we can delve into some of the details. Sure. But this uh, serves a great purpose to bring some awareness and also perhaps instill some curiosity in folks to what the details are about it. Something that we we toss around quite a bit, you know, referring to the Jones Act, but not maybe not knowing about it itself. I want to uh, end off with constitutionality, if you wouldn't mind, Mike. And and has there been constitutional challenges to the Jones Act? And if so, how have they fared? And uh, is there any move to repeal uh, in the present Congress, or has there ever been, and how did that fare? Uh, yeah, the, I don't believe cabotage is unconstitutional. Mm-hmm. I know that um, John Carroll of Hawaii uh, brought a suit along those lines 
uh, and that was uh, dismissed by the court. It didn't go very far. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, as uh, there have been uh, several attempts to bring reform to the Jones Act, um, Rob Cortell, with his legislative proposal, uh, was successful in getting three different bills introduced in the in the in the late 1990s, or actually mid to late 1990s, none of which um, ever had a vote in even in committee. Hmm. Uh, Representative Case, when he was in Congress, introduced a bill that would have exempted the Hawaii trade from the Jones Act in um, certain uh, specific aspects. Uh, And also, for example, um, Charles DeJou spoke about that in his um, uh, election campaign against uh, uh, Colleen Hanabusa, but he never got a chance to uh, actually implement any legislation. What we're actually calling for now is uh, a proposal that we've put forward uh, is that would uh, exclude uh, from the non-contiguous trades the U.S. build requirement of the Jones Act for large self-propelled ships. Basically, targeting that portion of the uh, of the domestic trade that involves containers and very large uh, ships uh, to bring those into com- into a, a, a more open international market as uh, the US is producing very few large ships today and they're extremely expensive as compared mm-hmm. to places like Japan and South Korea uh, what's the health of our fleet? Uh, our Jones Act fleet of large uh, self-propelled ships is quite small. It's under 100 ships. And the the average age, for example, of the common carrier fleet, the, basically the container fleets that are operating in the four non-contiguous uh, trades, uh, is uh, uh, about 28 years, hmm. which is quite old. The uh, mm-hmm. The... International fleet uh, averages around 12 years. The older ships uh, are inefficient, of course, um, and uh, uh, cost a lot of money to operate, and uh, it's an artificial scarcity which uh, causes higher prices, including higher freight rates. Well, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. And again, the invitation is always open to continue to uh, converse about this and also to get the word out about your particular proposal as well through the Hawaii Shippers Council. If folks would like to get in touch with you, Mike, is there an email address or website? Uh, They can email me at pacmar, P-A-C-M-A-R, at hawaiiantel.net. Great. Mike, thanks for taking the time on this series of 28 questions instead (laughs) of just five, but uh, compelling as always, and and hope to do this again soon with you. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mike. Bye now. That's Mike Hansen of the Hawaii Shippers Council, and hope you've enjoyed this edition of Five Questions Plus, and uh, we'll do it again soon. Thanks so very much. My name is Rick Amato. We'll see you then.